John Pennell Roberts, born John Rico Bono, was a noted drug trafficker and government informant, operated in the Miami area and was an associate of Colombia's Modela N cartel during the growth phase in cocaine trafficking, 1975 a year 1985. After his arrest, he was able to avoid a lengthy prison sentence by becoming a cooperating witness and proactive informant for the federal government. He was the author with Evan Wright of American Desperado. Early life, Roberts was born in New York City to Sicilian-American parents. His father Nat Rico Bono had earlier moved with his brothers from Sicily and made a living through involvement with various shady businesses throughout New York in the late 1940s. After being apprehended by police for kidnapping, Roberts was given an opportunity to expunge his record with military service. Roberts claims to have served with the 101st Airborne for four years in Vietnam. In his book American Desperado, he claims he moved to Miami because both the Mafia and law enforcement were after him because he was suspected in the murder of a police officer. Introduction to the Medela N Cartel, as demand for cocaine increased, Roberts found his Cuban suppliers unable to meet his demand. Through Roberts' girlfriend, he met Mickey Monday. Monday was a trafficker who introduced Roberts to Modela N agent Rafael Rafa Cardona Salazar. At first, Monday was apprehensive of Roberts, who had driven up in a black Mercedes Benz, which Monday described as having drug dealer written all over it. He also stated that Roberts' flashy car and flamboyant lifestyle made Roberts look like someone I wanted nothing to do with. Nevertheless, Roberts and Monday began working under the supervision of Max Mermelstein, who had an agreement with Salazar to manage the transportation of cocaine from Colombia to Miami. He then oversaw the delivery of the loads to cartel safe houses in the Miami area. Roberts was able to increase his monthly cocaine business through this direct connection. Mermelstein and Monday established the routes for trips to Colombia, using boats, tow truck companies, safe houses, and airstrips, thereby setting up an effective transportation route for the cartel. Roberts claims to have made over $100 million USD dealing cocaine during this period. He spent $50 million of that money on his extravagant lifestyle. In the book American Desperado Roberts claims he had $150 million in a Panamanian bank, over $50 million invested in real estate and businesses, as well as several million in cash hidden in various safe houses and hiding spaces. Horses, in American Desperado Roberts describes, after I made my first big school selling coke to Bernie Levine in California, Danny Mons told me race horses were a good way to launder money. He and Danny Mons started Mephisto Stables in 1977. In Chapter 62 of the book, Roberts recounts a variety of processes by which he used horses to launder money. Additionally, he also learned how to fix races. There were many tricks. Also in Chapter 62, Roberts describes another benefit to horses, dealing cocaine had promoted me into high society. Owning race horses took me into the stratosphere. He recounts prominent people he met through his racehorse connections, such as Judge Joe Johnson, who hosted horse auctions, and through him, we got friendly with Cliff Perlman, who owned Caesar's Palace. When I'd go to Caesar's and get comped, Everybody assumed it was because of my Mafia connections. No, I was connected to Caesar's Palace by a Kentucky judge. Through the same circle, we ended up becoming friends with Alton Enborm and his girlfriend, Gloria. Al was a guy who'd made it big in stereos. He describes a particular horse in the epigraph to his book, Desperado, the horse that I thought would win the derby and make me famous as something more than a gangster, was a baby when I got him. He hadn't been trained how to run, but he could already fly on the grass. He had good instincts. He didn't like other horses. You don't want a sociable horse. They stay in the pack. You want a horse who likes to run in front of all the other horses. Desperado was a killer. I named him Desperado because I saw myself in his eyes. Roberts also describes an honest jockey he had hired, and that jockey's demise, at Calder, I had a jockey named Nick Navarro who worked for me. He was one of the good guys. He wouldn't hold horses or charge them or run them on dope. He was very skilled, and when I ran my horses clean, 
I used Nick. One day in 1977, Sicky ran a race for me at Calder. I walked up to him after he finished. He put his hand up to wave, and there was a powerful explosion. A bolt of lightning came out of the sky and hit him. Multiple news outlet reports support John's recollection, except they fix the date one year later. As they document, on December 28, 1978, jockey Nick and Nick Navarro was killed by a direct lightning strike after completing the second race at Calder Racecourse. The remaining eight races at the track that day were cancelled. Downfall, Mermelstein acted as high-level trafficker working under cartel member Salazar and with the Monday Transportation Group. He was apprehended in 1985 by Miami police as a multi-kilo dealer. Mermelstein was implicated by a California trafficker who gave information to the DEA in return for a lighter sentence. This trafficker was busted along with John DeLorean during a 25-kilo cocaine sting. Mermelstein then turned state's witness against the Medela N cartel and supplied information that led to the dismemberment of Medela N in Miami. On the morning of September 20, 1986, a little over a year after Mermelstein's arrest, the DEA raided sites across Florida used to store and transport cocaine by Monday and Roberts. Roberts was arrested and then went on the run, becoming a fugitive living in Colombia and other parts of the world. He was later apprehended and became a cooperating witness and proactive informant for the federal government. Later years and death, according to his ex-wife and various other sources, Roberts used his past to gain trust within the criminal community and report their activities to the authorities in order to maintain his prison-free status. Others have also accused Roberts of being a confidential informant. One of the Fort Lauderdale police officers who arrested him in 1997 for stalking an ex-girlfriend, possession of a firearm, and resisting arrest with violence testified he found out later he's been a snitch or something. He was a C.I., confidential informant for somebody. In a 2009 Miami New Times article, Robert's lifestyle when he lived in Hollywood, Florida was described as follows. Former mega smuggler John Roberts who flooded Miami with $2 billion worth of cocaine in the 80s, naps away his days in a quiet lakefront Hollywood home. But soon, if what he says is true, a book, a high-octane movie, and video game contracts will again make him a player. But he doesn't want you to know this. He's worried this article could spoil the publicity for his book deal. When I told him last week this story would be published, the craggy, grey-moustached ex-gangster vowed, you will never write another word in this town again. I will go on TV and tell them everything in your article is bold-faced lies. I hope you get hit by a truck, you little scumbag. The outburst is in character with Robert's gangster flick biography, which he described in an on-the-record interview before changing his mind about publication. In 2011, Garcia Roberts interviewed Robert's American Desperado co-author Evan Wright for a Miami New Times article. In the article, titled American Desperado, co-author Evan Wright on Coke Cowboy John Roberts' memoir, the two authors discuss the book as well as their impressions and experiences when interviewing Roberts. For example, they shared that Roberts was not completely reformed in his later days. Garcia Roberts, in the book, you write that John, who as a felon is not allowed to have guns, showed you silences he kept buried in his backyard. One of his dogs regularly killed other dogs and cats in the neighborhood. Were you ever afraid during your time staying with John in Hollywood? Right, John doesn't live in Hollywood anymore, and he's very sick, so I think I can say this. My most uncomfortable moment came when I was doing an interview, and he gets a call. He says, oh, that's my police friends. They're selling me some unmarked guns. Roberts died of colorectal cancer on December 28, 2011, aged 63. See also, Cocaine Cowboys, Madela N. Cartel. References <laughs>